Hey guys, welcome back to the podcast. I'm your host, Josh Phoenix, and today we're past the NBA trade line. We're past all of that. I hope you guys are recovering from that, from all the games that happened from Thursday and yesterday. We're here. If your team made a deal, congratulations. If they didn't, all the Chicago Bulls did it and haven't since August of 2021. Waits to be all. I'm sorry, just gotta say it. We got a lot we gotta talk about. Today's podcast episode is gonna be real simple, boys and girls. For y'all that are listening, I know 19% of y'all listen. So I was checking my analytics real quick. I was checking my analytics. I'm like, there's no way a girl's actually listening to my podcast. A, I've never attracted a girl. I've never attracted a girl in my life before. And B, I don't know many girls that like basketball. Anyways, I saw that say when I was checking out analytics. Out of 100%, there was 19% of girls listening. So thank you very much. I appreciate that. Um, I, I, I can't believe I'm actually attracting a female. That's something new. Anyways, I hope you guys are coming back. I know I had the live stream on Thursday. We had the podcast episode on Wednesday. Yep, I can't talk anymore, but that's fine. But we had that on Wednesday and now we're just cooking. Um I'm gonna go into detail. This episode is gonna be short, simple, and to the point of we're gonna review every single trade that happened. Every single trade. Uh besides Pascal Siakam and OJ and Obi, we've already covered that. Those two deals, I don't believe we need to go into more details. That's just me, though. But if you guys do want that, please go to CourtToHeat.com. I have the latest and bestest on all of that good stuff. I also have the latest on some more trade stuff coming out. Uh, rumors. I'm, I just want to talk about that. We're going to go for all the NBA trades and the news of some of the bio market featuring the Lakers. Um, Grant Williams and the Mavericks, the, the Mavericks almost trading for Kyle Kuzma and how the Lakers are going to use their fur, uh, their free future first rounders to pursue either Donovan Mitchell, Trey Young or Kyrie Irving in this upcoming off season. I'll get to that in a bit, but boys, you know what to do. You know where to find me at, um, Obviously, the podcast, SoundCloud, iTunes, Google Podcast, TuneIn, Spotify, a SoundCloud, if I didn't say that, but if I did, I apologize. All of those good places, you can find me on the X. I'm there, or formerly known as Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok. Hit me up. I am always there. And yes, um, I did have a good NBA trade on. It was busy, but it was busy fun. Yes, I am having an internal and external beef with the vice president of the Chicago Bulls, whose name I cannot pronounce, so I'm not going to try to uh, botch it. I'm just not. I, 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 I don't know why I can't, but I just can't. Anyways, the Bulls, Bulls ownership gave them all, gave him power to rebuild this team. To put them into a rebuild. So I was right about DeMar DeRozan. Philly did want DeMar. The Bulls were still hesitant. Ownership said, sure, we'll take the loss. But they want to stay competitive. The vice president wanted to stay competitive. So I got messed over by one dude. Am I salty? Yes. Because I also also respect this. I, I respect this a lot of you guys. Like, people on X were sending me screenshots. Like, one dude sent me a screenshot and circled, was highlighting me saying that, that he will be traded. And he was supposed to be traded until the vice president said no. Ownership said yes, but they're trusting this vice president or trusting other 
influential people in the organization more. Whatever. Am I bitter? Slightly. Not going to lie. But anyways, I just want to put that out there. So was I wrong about DeMar DeRozan? Technically, yes. It, but it came down to one guy. My sources were correct. My predictions were correct. It just came down to one loser. And I, okay. Let me rephrase that. He's not a loser. I don't know the guy. But please. Quit being so conservative. Like, you don't have to be trying to be so competitive every year. And I guess while we're here, let's just jump right into the podcast episode. Uh, no more introductory stuff. Um, you know where to find me, courtsheat.com, courtsheat across all social media platforms except for Instagram. Instagram's funky. You got to add NBA at the end, so it's courtsheat NBA. But no, I just want to jump right into this. And since we're already talking about the Bulls, let's talk about the Bulls. The Bulls aren't on paper. They're not a bad team. Like, the Bulls on paper, they're, they're good. Like, they were good when they hired Billy Donovan. They were good when they assembled a quote-unquote big free of Zach Levine, DeMar DeRozan, and Alonzo Ball. And you got supporting guys like Kobe White. You got, you got supporting guys like Torrey Craig. You got supporting guys like Io DeSamu. You got guys. You got you got support guys. Alex Caruso. Javon Carter. Right, so you guys, you guys got guys. Chicago has dudes. They don't got bodies. They got superstars or all-star caliber players. Remember. Remember, this was supposed to be. A lineup that featured Zach Levine, DeMar DeRozan, and Alonzo Ball. It just has not gone the way. It just has not gone the way they were hoping. In all of these years, it's been a multi-year experiment. Now, they're not going to want to blow it up. Contractually, they're fine. DeMar DeRozan does want to make it work. And when... And my, and my report was starting to break the day of the trade on. The Bulls are 25 and 27, right? They're, they're f- I get they're the fourth in their division, but they're wielding themselves into a puff spot, right? But I felt as though a trade could have been done. That's what I was hearing. All I know is that you're telling me that you could have had... If you had a lineup of Kobe White, mm, like a lineup of Onzo Ball, Kobe White maybe, or Alex Crusoe, Zach Levine, DeMar DeRozan, and Nikola Vujovic, why would you not want to do that? But funny part is, this Bulls team is so dysfunctional, it does need to be blown up. But, Kobe White has been on a tear recently. I knew the dude can ball, but this has been an impressive season. Impressive season. Like, his last 10 games, 23 points, 6 assists, 6 rebounds, 51-40-84 for his shooting splits, and almost 40 minutes played. It's absolutely insane. Absolutely insane. Now, he is a, a former lottery pick of the 2019 NBA draft. He's been here for a very long time, but he's finally blossoming. He's finally blossoming, but so you have... Good morning. I don't know if you guys heard that ad was being played while I was bringing off the roster, but hello. Good morning, pretty people. Anyways, I don't know what this roster is going to be looking like, but Kobe White, I didn't know what he was going to turn into. He was here for the longest time, but now Kobe White is turning into a pretty decent player. He, it just took him a while to blossom, but now he's blossoming. This is career highs and rebounds, assists, points, free point percentage. Field goal percentage, minutes played, 
He's having a 13-minute increase from last season and this season. He's already played 52 games. He's only 23. Crazy to believe he's been in this league since the age of, what, 19? 24, only. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 24, 18. Like, that's pretty crazy. I'm not going to lie. He joined the Chicago Bulls when he was 19. Just did a quick, quick math. Like, the combo guard is gold. Like, he's good. And the only reason why I'm bringing up the Bulls besides what we've been hearing about, oh, they haven't made a trade since 2021. Ownership is just letting the vice president, other key members do what they do. Came down to one man. But what struck a chord within me is when Sam Amick of The Athletic reported that DeMar DeRozan would like to stay with the Bulls if the offer is good enough. And I, I do respect the Bulls on some end, on some spectrum? I don't know what the right word is, but I do respect the Bulls. A little bit because even though they're sitting in the range of the playing tournament. And yes, they have several veterans. Several players with tradable contracts. With expirable, expirable? expiring contracts. They're just staying in path. They're just running with what they have. And I, I don't know if I can pull up the quote again. But DeMar DeRozan wants to give this a shot. He had a pretty good analogy. I forgot what it was, but it was good. But it was just showing faith that, hey, I do want to stay here. Taking it from DeRozan's point of view, I do want to stay here. I don't want to leave. And I applaud him for that. It'll be interesting if he actually stays or not, but they want to work out the contract. The Bulls want to keep it going. Ownership, trust, management. Well, what can you do? And on paper, this team that has Zach Levine, DeMar DeRozan, Alonzo Ball, Nikola Vujovic, uh, Alex Caruso, Kobe White, what he's turned into. You don't take that for granted. That is a very, very good lineup. It just not has gelled. They're the Brooklyn Nets, but with all the factors and egos and biases, all of this stuff. So I know it's tough, and I know I've been poking fun at the Bulls for not making a trade since 21. But you have to respect them trying to go for the grind to have this beautiful process. And if we're just going to be blunt about it, I don't believe head coach Billy Donovan gets fired either. Does something have to go? Is he losing his team? Who knows? I... I don't believe Billy Donovan gets fired. I don't believe he's the guy to go. He's been here since 2020. He's been here for four seasons. He has, He's 142 and 146. Right? He's coached 288 games. He has a below 500 record. They've only played five playoff games. They've only been the one round. One round. And that was back in 2021 when they were 46 and 36. That wasn't a bad season for them. That was not a bad season for them. If we're going to be honest. I'm trying to pull up that season because I believe they had the same roster. As they do now, maybe a little bit different. Sure, it's a little bit different. You don't have Derek Jones Jr. anymore. Tristan Thompson's on the team anymore. Like I, I, but they were adding some guys. Sure, like Javon Carr's on this team, but now he is. Like sure, you are adding some guys, but the core players were there. Core players were there. It's crazy to feel. It's just crazy to feel how long ago 2021 was. And I know they had that uh, Eastern Conference first round matchup against the Milwaukee Bucks. And that did not go well. They lost 4-1. to one, Hence the five games. 
But it is what it is. It's just going to be a battle. It's just going to be a grind. It's just going to be a journey. It's a frustrating journey. But do I believe the Bulls want to stay competitive? And you're like, why wouldn't they just blow it up? And I want them to blow it up. They're ninth. They could start, but they're in the plan. And East is pretty beatable. Because in all reality, now that we're talking about it, they're only three and a half games out of six. Out of escaping the playing tournament. And who six in the East is the Indiana Pacers. Led by Pascal Siakam, Tyrese Halburn. Um, many would say, oh, maybe Buddy Heald. No, Buddy Heald was just traded to Philly. I'll talk about that in a minute because Philly is in fifth and they have a two-game advantage over Indiana. And if you guys were not here for my talk about the Knicks and how I was praising them, I'm going to go over that. But I have, I'm going to do that with all the traits. Trust me. I'm going to get there in a second. This is probably going to be a longer podcast episode, so just buckle in, y'all. Y'all been faithful so far. Just keep going with it. But when you look at the Bulls, there's something there. I'm not saying they're going to be first. No. But they're on a nice two-game winning streak. They're 6-4 in their last 10. Now that I'm looking at the Bulls, maybe the Rays are a strategic part because this team is still gelling. This team is still gelling. And they're coming together. And DeMar DeRozan, by far, has been the best player on their roster this season. It's unfortunate about Zach Levine, but I think it was a blessing in disguise with Zach Levine getting hurt. And let me phrase, let me just put it this way. Let me phrase it this way. I hate when players get hurt. I wish injuries on no man or woman. Trust me. I am not that person. It's sports. I hate injuries. I'm actually dealing with a shoulder injury myself from a sport I participate in. It's no fun. But Zach Levine being out has now elevated, has now elevated the exposure, has increased the minutes of white, a former lottery pick from the 2019 NBA draft. And if I remember correctly, I think that draft was the Zion Williamson draft. No, we didn't know. No, 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 that was the Kate Cunningham one, right? Why am, why am I dating myself? No, that was Zion. No, I'm, no, I was right the first time. I was right the first time. Yeah, 2019 was Kate, was Zion Williamson. Yep, that was Zion Williamson. The year before was DeAndre and, and that crazy draft class. No, I don't know why I doubt myself. I do not know why. Anyways, I'm... I, I, don't, I, I don't know why I was doubting myself. Anyways. So you had that going for you. But now that we're talking about it, now we're going through, we're like, okay, this, this team is rocking, this team is rolling. Maybe we're finally kicking some of the gear. And if you could get this as a 500 team, because you're only 0. .19. 0. .19 off from becoming 500. I know you're bad away. You're 10 and 15 away. You're 15 and 12 at home. I honestly believe that this this Bulls team has an opportunity to go 500. Or at least staying around that 480 mark. I, I think that's fair. To keep them at the free... Oh, I'm sorry. The 480 mark. Or 500. 500 is preferable. Right, I think most teams want to be about or over 500 or way over 500, like the Milwaukee Bucks or Phoenix Suns. I'm not sorry, Boston Celtics. But when you look at this roster, their starting lineup is Kobe White, Alex Cruz, DeMar DeRozan, Patrick Williams, and Nikhil Vujovic. You're like, wow, that bites. It really doesn't, though. Like, they're all complementing each other nicely. It's all going together. The pieces are clicking. Because then you have supporting cast members like Andre Drummond, Tory Craig, and Javon Carter, all these guys. And it really is working. At least I believe it's working. That's just me, though. So that's where we're at with. The Chicago Bulls. 
So you need to blow it up. They're just in a weird situation right now. So they're not bad, but they're not the greatest. They're they're good. They're getting better, I guess. Right? The Bulls are playing the Magic today. Right? Gets there at five. So they got that going for my... They can... I think they can beat the Magic. I don't know when the last time they played the Magic. I'm trying to check right now, but... The way they're playing right now, I believe that they can take the fight to Orlando. Why can't they? You got the Hawks, Cavs, Celtics. It's going to get tough. It's going to get tough. But if you can somehow manage before the All-Star break to become a 500 team. Now, I know that's like in first of games. I know the All-Star break is coming up soon. But if you could like still hover below 500 or get to 500... That's a huge win. That's a morale. That's a game changer. That's really my opinion on it. Am I wrong? Am I right? Who knows? But that's how I feel right now. And I know I was crushing the Bulls early. And I had, but there was always a valid perspective. There was always a valid reason behind why I said what I said. On why the Bulls need to blow it up. And if it doesn't work this season. Or next season rather. Then you have to. Something has to go. And I'm not saying every man has to be beheaded. I'm just saying one guy needs to be put on the chop block. And waved goodbye to. That's all I'm saying. And I know five days ago I said. Um, the Bulls need to blow it up. But. That was for different reasons. Different context if you will. So. I got a few more stories I want to get through. But raise your hand. Even though I can't see your hand and you can't see mine. Or any part of me and I can't see any part of you. But raise your hand if you thought Grant Williams was a pain in the behind. Honestly. I thought Grant Williams was a loser in Boston. Who couldn't do his job well. He sure had some moments, some glimpses of hope, but for the most part, he was just a walking tool. Then when he came to Dallas, it's like whatever. He's just some he's just some dude with a big contract. Remember, he has like a four year, fifty four million deal because it was a sign trade. Well, according to Tim McMahon of ESPN. Here's what he said. They wanted to dump him. Quote, the fact they gave up a 23rd swap for Grand Williams and they dumped him as soon as they possibly could, which they were determined to dump him. Not just about getting P.J. Washington, they wanted to be out of the Grand Williams business. He rubbed a lot of people the wrong way. He switched from Lucas to Tatum's, by the way, his shoe selection. That ends the quote, obviously. But Graham Williams was not good in the 2022 NBA Finals. He he harmed him more than actually helped. There was no beneficial factor in having him. But they thought there was something. Like, Luca and him shared the same agent. But I think there's a reason why that arrival to Dallas was big. I thought they should have kept Brady Block. But I understand why they got rid of him. But Grant Williams is like a cancer. And he, he's now on the Charlotte Hornets. We're going to talk about it here in a couple of minutes. But he is a straight up cancer. He's inconsistent as all get out. He's a guy that just averages 6-3-1 in 22 minutes. Those are his career averages. Sometimes he'd go off for 27, 9, 16, 8, and 3, like he did against Sacramento. Then other times he's going 1 of 6, 1 of 7, 1 of 2, 3 of 5, 1 of 6, 2 of 5, 3 of 6, 3 of 6. Those are not good numbers. 
In fact, ladies and gentlemen, those are horrific numbers. Those are dumpster fire numbers. Like I said, he is a troll. He is a loser. Good riddance. And now the Hornets are stuck with him. Charlotte's stuck with him. And we're going to get to the Grant Williams trade here in a couple minutes. I know I keep bringing up this, but I have a point why I'm bringing up all these news and reports, rumors, all that stuff. And speaking about the Hornets, the Hornets would like to re-sign Miles Bridges, which was something that was discussed on Thursday, the NBA trade deadline, the official day for the deadline. And I touched on it a bit that, well, if he's staying with Charlotte, he's most likely going to get re-signed. Hornets, after seeing multiple 40-point performances, multiple, like, a, a lot, too many to count on one hand, 25-plus point performances, getting some double-doubles, like, the dude's averaging 22-7 and free, if rounding up to 21.9 points per game. And I'm not going to keep beating into a dead horse who I think Miles Bridges is as a human being. I'm not just going to get into that. I'm going to keep it basketball. Because I'm trying not to make the podcast so negative. But for the past two to three episodes, I had to let you guys know my feelings. I had to let you guys know online. But according to Jake Fisher of Yahoo Sports, the Charlotte Hornets are in the business to re-sign. They have the mentality to re-sign Miles Bridges. And it makes sense. Why wouldn't you want a guy that's giving you 22 Seven and free. And his shooting splits are nice as well. Don't forget he's shooting like 45% from the field. And I know against Milwaukee in 31 minutes, he went 2 of 16 for 11 points. But if you take away that game and you look at the last 9 games, excluding February 9th's game, yesterday's game, he and I'm going from the 7th of 24th, he had 45 41, 19, 9, 30, 21, 21, 21, 20. He had two stinker of a game. But then he's making it up for 15 rebounds, 10 rebounds, 9 rebounds, 7 rebounds, 10 rebounds. Sometimes 7 assists, 5 assists, 5 assists, 5 assists, 6 assists. Like, you understand where I'm coming at. He's evolving his role. This is the type of player you want to have on your roster and it makes sense that if you want to re-sign him you're going to have him Lamelo Ball, Brandon Miller, Mark uh, Williams those are the guys you want to build around those are 100% the guys you want to build around and it makes 100% good sense it just does I can't bash Charlotte for it and Charlotte's tried everything in her power. They have this work right. Because right now, their lineup is Omel Ball, Brandon Miller, Miles Bridges, Grant Williams, Nick Richards. But then, obviously, um, Wait a minute, I get something messed up here. No, 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 we're good, we're good. Sorry, I was just off things on us. But yeah, Mark Williams. Sorry, I was just, I know he's been out for the past four weeks. I just want to make sure because I didn't see him. Even on the injury report, but he was too, yeah, never mind. Never mind, I was an error on my end. But anyways. So the Shaw Horns, this is going to be the long game. This is going to be the long-term road. The long-term solution. Because they want to have it around those four guys most likely. If I had to take a pretty good swing at it. If I had to take a pretty good swing. So we got down the Mavericks. We got down the Hornets. We got down the Bulls. Well... What about the Lakers? What's going on with LeBron? What's going on with their offseason? What's going on with Spencer Dinwiddie? So, I don't know if you guys were paying attention last night. I wasn't able to watch any NBA games. Just 
did not have the capability last night to watch any games. It just was, it was something I would I just couldn't do last night. But I think Spencer Dinwiddie is going to be a part of the Los Angeles Lakers. He hung out with Rob Plinkett sitting next to each other during the game. During the middle of the second quarter, with, uh, with 4.33 to go, score 69-60, Lakers are leading by 9 against the Pelicans. You can see the two sit next to each other. And then Daniel Starkan, 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 I don't know, I'm sorry dude, I don't know how to pronounce your name. But Daniel, my boy Daniel, managing editor for Lakers Nation. Uh, took a photo and said, Dinwiddie and Plinka outside the Lakers locker room right now. They're outside. Pretty much he's going to be a Laker. Like, even NBA TV picked this up. I'm just saying. This picked up, and the Lakers knew what they were doing. Bob Palenka knew what it was doing. Spencer Dinwiddie knew what it was doing. I'm just, I'm just saying, this is probably going to happen. Also, can we just point out for a second that in that defense in the NBA is completely dead? Like, it's so pathetic now. Speaking about the Lakers, because I did, I did point this out on the X. I'm going to pull up the final result. The final result was 139 to 122. But the first quarter, the first half, the Lakers put up. You ready? 87 points. The Pelicans dropped. 74 points. I asked impressive offense or depressing defense. It is depressing defense. No way should there be fur quarter like numbers in the first half. Let me rephrase that. Late fur quarter statistics and points, all that stuff on a scoreboard in the first half. No way should the Lakers be dropping, or any team should be dropping 51 points in a quarter. That was their second quarter. It's inexcusable. It's depressing. It's disgusting. It actually made me throw up a bit. I I, I, I know people find offense fun, but it's just not fun when they're doing it all the time. It's not even a challenge. Like, you know what I mean? Sure, this is some of a game. Sure, got normal, like, in the third and fourth, but there was no defense in the first half, and this has just been such a constant revolving door issue. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe it's just me. Maybe it's just me. Now, where do we go with LeBron James? Speaking of the Lakers, not after this, I'm going to segue into another Lakers topic. And then that sh- will that be the last one? Yeah, that'll be the last one we'll talk about. Just because I do want to get to the trades. Oh, by the way, the Wizards were close to trading Kyle Kuzma to the Mavericks, but they just wanted to hold him on. They just want to hold on to him. Plus, Daniel Gafford was instead traded from Washington to the Dallas Mavericks. So they were close, but... They just decided to hold on to their piece, which I understand. 
Anyways, per Zach Lowe on his podcast after the trade line, quote, on LeBron, look, I can't sit here and really tell you I know what LeBron wants out of life. Everything I've heard for years, including today, is if he had his brothers, he would like to finish his career with the Lakers. There are pipe dream scenarios out there where like, well, Philly has all this cap. Could he opt in and ask for a trade to Philly? I haven't heard that. Those things are real. I think he wants to finish his career as a Laker. I think he probably will opt in. Is he really opting out of 51 million? End quote. Lil added that the situation will likely feel different had James and the Lakers not won the championship in 2020. I think LeBron comes back. I think the Lakers will spend the second round pick on his bum of a son and just make LeBron feel good and have his son play like 10, 12 minutes a game. Well, he's probably going to have to play 30 games because of the GM. Anyways, all the indicators unofficially and officially are saying that LeBron James wants to spend the rest of his career with the Lakers, or he's going to be back another season or two with the Lakers. Personally, I couldn't see him going back to the Heat or back to the Cavaliers. I know it's been tossed around, pitched out, wheeling and dealing. I just don't see that. I don't see a world where LeBron goes back to one of those two places. I really do believe we see him go and just keep balling out with the Los Angeles Lakers. Honestly, I honestly believe he's going to be spending the rest of his career with the Lakers. And if that's true, and I believe it is true, then it makes sense why the Lakers are ready to use three of their first rounders. Three of their future first rounders to pursue star trading targets like Donovan Mitchell, Trey Young, and Kyrie Irving. And even though they didn't make a move at the trade line, and sure that's a little bummed out, that sure is a little eh, this is setting them up for a massive move in the offseason, where they've been connected to Young, Mitchell, and Irving for the longest of time. And they want to use picks, like either the 24 pick, the 25 pick, the 29 pick, and the 31 pick. You have four different picks, but they want to use three, either 24, 25, 29, and 31. They want to pursue a star. They want to help their backcourt. And it really does make sense. And the Athletic did confirm that. And Donovan Mitchell is in the final season of his contract with the Cleveland Cavaliers. And we don't know if he's going to return to Cleveland. We also know that teams like Miami, Brooklyn, New York are all going after him. I'm just saying. I know the Cavaliers have been going good, but why if you can't retain them? And then you have Trey Young. Trey Young, sure he's good, but part of him may want out. Or maybe you're looking at management in Atlanta and you're just like, he's not really producing that much. Like, he, like I wonder if they wish they would have kept Luka Doncic. That is, that may haunt them. But Luka Doncic is an egotistical player and is a ball hog. So, he's going to ruin Dallas more than help them. But we have to keep up that Good boy Luca uh, narrative, of course. All I'm saying is that if you want a larger haul, well, instead of doing DeJounte, do Young. If you don't think DeJounte and him can cohabitate, you want to send Young off somewhere, okay. The Lakers won't say no. What? And then Kyrie, Kyrie's Kyrie. Like, he's always been linked to the Lakers and LeBron James and Anthony Davis since. Uh, his exit, his abrupt exit from the Brooklyn Nets in June of 2022. He's going to have two years left on his deal. But you're telling me that free first round is going to land one of them? Which is so insane because you can't tell me you're going to value Rudy Gobert more 
at four with a bunch of other players. I think Dilo is in that deal as well, if I remember correctly. Then for these guys, but you're gonna you're gonna tell me you're gonna have a lineup of you're gonna have a big three of either Mitchell, Braun, and Davis, or Young, Braun, and Davis, or Kyrie, Braun, and Davis. You're almost creating recreating Cleveland, but with a better center. No disrespect to my boy uh, Kevin Love. I love Kevin Love. I thought he was great in Minnesota. I thought he was great in Cleveland. I thought his new role in Miami has been working out very well. I'm just saying, they're recreating Cleveland. Cleveland's big free. The Cavaliers big free when they were going toe-to-toe -to -toe with the legendary Stephen Curry and his teams. Winning a championship back in 2016. LeBron said, this is for you, Cleveland. Very emotional night. Now look at him. You could create Cleveland 2.0 in Los Angeles. That would be very, very funny. Like, I, I would actually not be against that. I actually would not be against that at all. Do I like the Lakers? No. Do I like LeBron? Eh, it depends. Uh, and it's just from a son's perspective, you know. I still do think Michael Jordan's to go, and it's not even close, but going to have those brawn fans screaming at me. Anyone else who slightly disagrees. But the Lakers could actually set them up set themselves up very nicely. Like I don't I don't hate this. The move they're doing, Polinka is thinking strategically. He's thinking of this way Intellectually. Like he's actually being smart for once. And I don't mean that. As. As something to be rude. It's just true. Like he's a. For the players GM. He just lets the lead GM. And Street Coast Davis. Do what they want. But you're not telling me. You want to also throw up D'Lo. So let's say is Austin Reeves really that valuable, though? Like, he's fine, don't get me wrong. It's just... It's Austin Reeves. He's, he's, a, he's kind of a nobody. Hey, I get it, he's good. But not to level, but I don't know. So let's say D'Lo's gone. He's in the deal. You're going to have a backcourt of, like, Kyrie, Young... Um, I don't know, Mitchell. Man, you have a backcourt. Like, dang, dude, that's gonna be nice. I'm just, I'm just, I'm just saying, guys. This is something. That, that's going to be a little terrifying. So I know they didn't make a move at the deadline, but when you think ahead, like when you're playing chess and you're thinking like the moves ahead, and your opponent, and even yourself, this is a good deal. This is a good trade-off. You wait towards the offseason where you can use a little more leverage to your advantage. I don't know if that makes sense, but it makes sense to me, so it works. I think we're about to see the Lakers pull off a power move in the offseason. Man, oh man, is that going to be fun. I'm already imagining Kyrie in a Lakers uniform. Or Donovan Mitchell's in, an, in his own uni. Or even Trey Young. I even photoshopped one of Trey Young. I had to pull that image again, but I photoshopped of him. All very interesting. All very, very interesting. And I don't hate any of them. I don't hate any of that. The guys, with that being said, I'm going to run through all the trades now. I'm going to try to keep this to like an hour, hour in 10 minutes, not too long for you guys, I don't want to bore y'all out of your mind, but 
Um, I'm pulling this from sports.yahoo.com where Eric Mullen was kindly enough to put a list of every deal made before the NBA trade line. Because for me to do all this and put it in my own Google Doc, that seemed like a lot of work. To put it in my own notes app, that seemed like a lot of work. And that's how I just researched a bit. And I found this dude. Thank you. I think the two biggest takeaways is that the Mavericks got even stronger by adding P.J. Washington and Daniel Gafford. Like, the lob threat and who Gafford is as a big man is going to be scary. Who P.J. Washington is is going to complement Luka and Kyrie. And I think it's also the New York Knicks. They added Bojan Bojanovic and Alex Burks. And they're doing it to a strong roster. And if you get this roster healthy, whoo, that's going to be something fun. Not going to lie. Not going to lie at all, boys. So first, um, I'm going to run through the smaller trades. Not really going to give much insight, right? Just going to run from. So the Golden State Warriors traded Corey Joseph to the Indiana Pacers. Uh, Pacers received Joseph in cash. The Warriors received a second round pick. I believe Corey Joseph was waived. Let me check. I, I could have sworn I saw him being waived. Was he waived? Yep, he was waived. Yep, he was waived. Okay, I, I, I want to make sure. The, uh, Danilo Bennington was traded from the Celtics to the Blazers. Um, again, a second rounder. The Celtics traded Jaden Springer to the 76ers. They received a second rounder. Um, the Milwaukee Bucks received cash as they traded Robin Lopez to the Sacramento Kings, expected to be waived. It was actually really funny. During the Bucks game, he was there reading a book. I actually found it really funny. Uh, the Pacers received Doug McDermott. McDermott. McDermott? Yeah, McDermott. To the San Antonio Spurs. For San Antonio, got Marcus Moore Sr., a second round pick in cash. Pat Bev was traded to the box, where Philly got campaign a second rounder. Uh, Pat Bev's podcast, Pat, uh, Pat Bev Pod, um, on X, uh, broke. The only broke his own news, broke uh, his trade from Philly to Milwaukee. Now, this one, Darren Mori is a loser on every account, every word. I don't like Darren Mori. I thought he was a loser also in Houston, right? The way he's doing is dirty. Like, James Harden was right. I thought James Harden was a little dramatic. I've been a critic. Critical of James Harden, but he's turned around his career. He's adopted his new role. He's getting double doubles. He's doing this. He's doing what he can, especially for a really good Clippers team, who last time I checked won twenty seven, the last thirty two. And I know the statistics are thirty two, uh, like a couple days old, but for that statistic, that's still pretty huge. But per ba- uh, Patrick Brothers podcast, it was said. That there was a conversation between the two that they were having two weeks ago before the deadline where Pat Bell was like, am I getting traded? Moore was like, you? No, no, not you. Of course not. So, Darren Moore is a liar. We don't like him. Um, Yeah, I, I don't like Darren Moore. I find Darren Moore to be a loser. And I strongly mean that. Like, I strongly, strongly mean that anyways so Pat Bev is now in Philly makes sense I'm sorry Pat Bev is now in Milwaukee oh my I'm doing that a lot. I did that for a trade I think that involved Minnesota over the Timberwolves I have to look at the trade again but yeah um Patrick Beverly to the Bucks. Look, that makes sense. They got ready to Drew Holiday. Was it worth it? Cause you got Dame time. Sure. 
but you also gave up defense. Still hate Glenn Rivers. Me and Los Angeles, me and the Clippers got one thing in common. I may hate their guts because I'm a Suns fan, but me and them boys, we just call him Glenn. We don't call him Doc. Don't deserve it. He's a loser. Should have kept Adrian Griffin. That's just me, though. But look, you got Pat Bev. He's going to be a great defense, but I know him and Dame have beef. But I'm pretty sure it was hashed out or it's going to be hashed out when they wouldn't have made the trade. That's just me. Now, if you guys are listening, we're listening to my trade deadline live stream. The official live podcast episode of Your Courts of Heat. I don't know why I said Your Courts of Heat. Whatever. I was freaking out about the Suns acquiring Royce O'Neal and David Roddy. I know we had to give out Kieta Bates the op, Jordan Goodwin, Yuta Wananabe. Was there a fourth guy? I thought there was a fourth guy. Either way, there was a free team there was a free team trade. Where the Suns received Royce O'Neal, David Roddy. The Nets received uh, K- uh, KBD, Goodwin, and three second rounders. Uh, and then we saw the Grizzlies get Utah Wanambi in a pick swap. Wait a minute, Chemezi Metu is traded to the Grizzlies as well. I don't know why in the Yahoo. Did, Met- did Metu not get traded? I could have sworn. Especially when I was reporting this. I thought it was. Mm. My bad, because they waved them. Yep. According to Sports Illustrated, they, uh, Michael Scotto, a hoops hype, said that the Grizzlies will wave them. Okay, that did make sense. Okay, I just want to make sure I wasn't missing anything. I do not want to inaccurate report news to you guys, but... This is so huge for the Phoenix Suns. First, I'll talk about O'Neal. I thought getting Royce O'Neal was very smart. I didn't know if we were going to be able to do it or not. Just because of the assets. But when Miles Bridges couldn't have been gone anymore. And Dwayne Rankin was talking about it. He said we were solely focusing on... Royce O'Neal. Uh, we were locking in on that. And indeed, ladies and gentlemen, we did. We got I was so excited. I was so stinking excited for Royce O'Neal. You're like, calm, it's just Royce O'Neal. I, 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 I still like Royce. Always have, always will. And I thought it was such a smart trade. Because really, like, let's do, let's do it, like, okay, like, let's do it this way. Like, you actually upgraded, I'm going to use a phone now, G, you ready? So, where do I want to put this? I respect these players because they made it to the NBA, I do. But, uh, how do I put this? How do I put this? Getting Royce O'Neal, trading all the assets that we did, was like upgrading your phone from iPhone 6 to the iPhone 14. Right? That's what we have. Like the newest iPhone out there, whatever number it is, is like trading to get that somehow from an iPhone 6. Like, you somehow made the money work, and it was, like, one of the glorious things ever, and people are questioning if you should be in jail or not. And why I love this deal so much is we are able to retain him beyond this season because we have his bird rights. And I say we like I'm a part of his team, but I'm a diehard Fink Suns fan, and I had to go for all their bad seasons. So, yes, I, I feel as though I own part of this team in my soul. And... I like this deal because we finally get that full. We finally get that quote-unquote wing player. That swing man. 
who is really good at defense and getting a couple of buckets. He's a greedy, gutty player. Like, he's greedy, gutty. This is the type of guy Frank Vogel loves. Exactly who they like who they were wanting. And it adds another component of physicalness, of physicality, of hardcoreness, of getting on the ground, scrapping, getting a guy's face, backing him down, keeping him up. Like whatever. I like Royce O'Neal. I'm very happy. And I believe we're gonna be seeing him today against the Milwaukee Bucks. I believe we're uh playing the Milwaukee Bucks today. Let me just confirm that up for you guys. Oh, no, I'm sorry. The Golden State Warriors. That's right. See, I'm a walking moron. Like, I know I've been brain fried before recording this podcast, but still. Still, you think I would understand. I, I think I've just been talking. I think I've been like, talking and thinking about the Bucks way too long. But all I know is we're playing the Warriors tomorrow. That's at 6.30 p.m. AZ time or 8.30 p.m. East Coast time. Like, we don't have to play the Bucks again till March 17th. I don't even know what I was thinking. I actually may be a living idiot. Anyways. With all of that said, um, we're playing the Warriors tomorrow. And I think Royce O'Neal and David Rye are going to make their impact. I think they're make their debut, and I'm very excited for that. I'm going to try to catch some of the game or some of the highlights. I don't know. I'm probably going to be out that day, but whatever. But yeah, so I'm happy we're able to get his bird rights. That's the type of player we need. David Roddy is also very intelligent. His fast fly IQ is very good. Like, David Roddy's stats, like, he's been stepping up for a really bad Grizzlies team. And you saw him, I know he's just 8-4-1 on the season, 23 minutes, and his role's increasing. But he's a second-year player who's now dropping 15-16. Like, in his last three games, it was 15-6-11 on of shooting, 14-6-16, on but 8 rebounds, 16-6-10 on from the field with four rebounds, three assists. Like you have to understand, if he can't get it going shooting wise, well, okay, he'll get you some rebounds, he'll get you some assists. Like he's the type of forward you want. And he's a former first to oh, uh, he's a first a former first round pick. He was out of the 2022 NBA draft. Pretty cool tidbit for people that want to know. I thought David Roddy could be, and that was also, if I remember correctly, that was the Paul Panchero, Chet Holmgren, Jabari Smith Jr. draft class with a bunch of amazingly talented guys like Jalen Duran, Mark Mark Williams we were just talking about, Christian Brown was in there, Shaden Sharp, I know he was just, he's I think he's rehabbing surgery or something, Jane Ivey, a lot of guys, a lot of guys. That was a very good trade for the Phoenix Suns. Like, I do not hate that at all. In fact, I love that trade. So much so, I would love to see it happen again. Goodwin did not pan out the way. And I was excited for Goodwin. He just never panned out. He never turned out. Same with Yuda. Same with Metu. Metu had some br- bright moments. He outplayed Eubanks on some moments, but Eubanks... Proved to be the better guy. Kid of Bates Diop just made me angry. And so for us to replace him with Royce O'Neal and David Roddy. They're now, we're now building for our playoff push. We're getting this team. We're gelling together. And it makes sense why we didn't get a point guard. Because you can't add a floor general this late into the season. Try to learn the team. Try to learn and gain chemistry with the players. With the coaching staff. It's going to be more jumbled together, more discombobulated, more dysfunctional. And it's not going to be a loving family unit like we all want it to be. If we really want to put it that way. Just trying to keep it in simplistic terms. So you don't want to corrupt the framework, the foundational layout of this unit. So it makes sense why you're still running point book 
or Brad Beal or Katie bringing it up or even Grayson Allen sometimes. But I do like this. They are prioritizing their eight to, man, eight to nine man rotation. And, and it's working. You're going to have a very solid lineup. You guys have gone. We have gone better. The Phoenix Suns have gone better. And that's not me being a homer. I honestly do believe that because I've always liked Royce O'Neal. When he was on the Nets especially, I thought he was good. And the Suns are only five games out of first. They're 31 21. They're turning around their season very nicely. They're 7 and 3 in their last 10. It's better than the Lakers, better than the Warriors, better than the Rockets, better than the Jazz, better than the Mavericks, Pelicans, right? Timberwolves, but the Timberwolves have number one seed. And then, of course, Thunder's like a half a game. Same with the Nets. I'm sorry, not all my Nuggets. It's just been a very long day for me. Like at the time of this recording, it's very late in the morning. Very late in the morning now I'm recording this. But I tried doing it late in the morning. So when I'm looking at times and stuff, I'm not going to confuse like, yeah, quote for you guys yesterday, but for me t- today, and for you guys today, and for me tomorrow. Like, you know what I mean? Sounds dumb, I know. But just bear with me. But no, I really do like that deal. I was very excited when it happened. Like, I was very, um, very, very, uh, punctuated in my tone on Thursday during the live stream. But this was a very smart move by James Jones and Matt Ishbia. Especially James Jones. It's been very, very good. Uh, PJ Washington to the Mavericks. So the Hornets will receive Grant Williams, Seth Curry, and a first round pick for PJ Washington. Not only did the Mavericks not like Grant Williams when they gave up that that 2030 pick, now they're really now they're really just pushing it at him. But all jokes aside, they gave up that first rounder and Curry. But Seth Curry is who he is. He's not his brother. Still good. He's still a fine basketball player. Just not the guy we all want. The best was when we saw the Curry showdown. When the Blazers were in the playoffs. It was Warriors against Blazers. Like, it was one of the greatest things ever. I love watching that. Of course, Steph Curry got the victory over Dame and Curry, right? CJ McCollum was still on that team. Joseph Nurich. Was that Collins still on that team? I'm trying to remember that team. Anyways. Dallas is doubling down on P.J. Washington. I like P.J. Washington. I thought P.J. Washington was a nice ad. Like, I really do not hate that. I do not hate that at all. I think he's going to compliment the Mavericks a lot. Elf, and they're so confident, they gave a pick and two assets. Right, so. When you put all of that together, you're like, well, we now have a starting lineup of Luke Doncic, Kyrie Irving, Josh Green, PJ Washington, and Derek Lively. And then you throw in Daniel Gafford. I'm... I'll have to find the official trade, but adding Daniel Gafford is just so nice. Like, you really cannot be upset about that. Like, you really can't. Daniel Gafford. I don't know if anyone else is really getting excited about Daniel Gafford, but he is an underrated big man. He is. I, I like Daniel Gafford. Like, they got a backup center. He's a, he's a really good backup center. He's averaging 11-8 per game. And two blocks. Two blocks per game is seventh in the NBA. I want people to talk about that more. I'm, I'm just I'm just saying. 
Like, I am very happy about that. I don't know if anyone else is happy about it, but I am. Like, I really do like Daniel Gafford. And I know, I know, I know it's crazy to be like, oh, it's Daniel Gafford. But he's a really... But he's a really good backup center. I, I don't know if it's just me, but... Like, I really do like Daniel Gafford. Like, I, I, I really don't know if I should go into detail or not, but... He, he's just, he's a blocking machine. Like, what more do we say? He's like the backup version of Chris House Porzingis. Okay, I'm not going to go that far, especially Boston Porzingis. But, like, like, do you not know how well he can play defense? Like, he is a rim protector. He can play the interior very well. Man. He is going to be so underappreciated. I am excited for Daniel Gafford. I have a feeling no one else is really excited for Daniel Gafford. Well, I have a feeling it's just me who's excited about Daniel Gafford. But anyways, we have Daniel Gafford and we have PJ Washington. We got a backup center and we have a good starting forward just saying this team's cooking on all cylinders and whether we want to admit to that or not it's whatever but I'm just telling you guys I really do believe that we're seeing very positive trends. I really, I, I think the Mavericks come together. I think that's going to make the Mavericks a very scary team. Maybe it's just me. Maybe I'm going a little too overboard, but the Mavericks can gel into something. That's just me, though. Yeah, that's just me. I don't... Yeah, I don't know. I have to think on that a little bit more. Because on paper, this works. But like, in real life, will it? I don't know. I'm going to have to explore. Okay, so we have... That trade covered. Y'all still tracking with me? Good. So, Spencer Dinwiddie went to the Raptors. We all know Sp Spencer Dinwiddie is going to the Lakers now. He's, he's already, he was already waived. But now Brooklyn, the Brooklyn Nets have Dennis Schroeder and Thaddeus Young. That's really not bad. Like, they really did need a true guard. A better facilitator. A better Ford general. Because it was just, it was not cutting with Spencer Dinwiddie. But Dennis Schroeder's good. And you add in the, 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 the Thaddeus Young, why not? I think that's very good. And Thaddeus Young is a very, very good backup. He's a very, very good 4-5 uh, combo. He's a stretch big. That's who he is. That's exactly who he is. So very nice. Then we got Daniel Gafford to the Mavericks. I was already talking about that, but the Wizards received Rich on Holmes in 2024 first rounder. Again. Again. This 2024 draft class is seen as one of the weakest draft class in a very long time. So take it as you take it as you may. Uh, Gordon Hayward was sent off to the Thunder. It was pretty much known that the Horns were going to try to move off of him. 
It was just who wanted him. OKC was knocking on the door, and Charlotte got Davis Bertans, Trey Mann, uh, Michi, if I'm saying your name correctly, and draft compensation. I, I don't know what he got in terms of draft compensation. I'm assuming like a draft pick or two, but that's where we're at. And I'm trying to see if Davis Bertans originally played there. Hold on. No, it was for Dallas instead. Sorry. I was looking for something. So then, there was, there, was, there, was, there was like a few more trades. Uh, we already co Oh, I'm sorry. Antero Gier. We already covered Kyrgios Jr. to the Pacers. Pascal Siakam. We've covered Gallinari. We've covered OG. We covered Scary Terry. We covered Steven Adams. Uh, Simeon, uh, Simon Fontecchio to the Pistons. The, uh, the Jazz got Kevin Knox, a 2024 second round pick via Washington draft rights to Gabriel uh, Procida. Not bad. Pistons got some for death. They just switched them out. Kevin Knox wasn't really working. So, hey, just switch it. Um, Xavier Tillman. I know he's not the greatest finisher. But he's still a solid big man that can play good defense, that can protect the paint. And just like the Phoenix Suns, the Boston Celtics are going into business for themselves for the postseason. And they're saying, hey, we need Xavier Tillman. We're going to make that deal happen. And they made a reality. They gave up a 2027 second rounder via Atlanta and a 2020, sorry, 2030 second rounder via Dallas. And Lamar Stevens. So that makes sense why they got Xavier Tillman. They're trying to get their 8, 9, 10 man rotation set and ready to go for the postseason. Uh, Monta Morris to the Timberwolves. Timberwolves received Monta Morris. Pistons received Shake Mellon, Troy Brown Jr. 20, 30 second round pick. That is what it is. Uh, Buddy Hield to the Sixers. 76ers received Buddy Hield. And he had Pacers receive Mark Moore Sr., Forcon Korsmots, and three second rounders. Uh, Forcon was released. And Mark Moore Sr., I believe, is still of the team. Three second rounders. PJ Washington was very livid when he couldn't get traded. But Buddy Heald is gone out of Indiana. And is now in Philly. And it makes sense for Philly because the 76ers have a lot of off the ball players. Where they don't have that really commanding on the ball player, especially when Joel is out, and you can't be two hundred on the season without Joel and seven hundred with Joel. That's just not good. So now, when you add a guy like Buddy Healed, he's on the ball. He's good. He could do that. I would like them. I would like to see them get. DeMar DeRozan, but of course one man shut that down and then everyone was coming from my throat. Ah, still not bitter. Whatever. Still, but a very, very good trade for the 76ers. Very strategic, very smart. And he did not have to give up much for him, which is an even better bonus. Honestly, you did not have to give up much for him. And their starting lineup is this. As soon as I'm able to pull it up. Any moment now. Bum bum. Tyrese Maxey, DeAnthony Melton, Tobias Harris. Uh, bum. That should be Buddy Hill. So I'm going to go Tyrese Maxey, Buddy Hill, Tobias Harris, Nicholas Batum, and Paul Reed. But when everyone's healthy, it should be Tyrese Maxey, Buddy Hill, Tobias Harris, uh, Nicholas Batum, or Kelly Bird Jr., and Joel Embiid. I'm just saying that's going to be very, very good. Very, very good. Uh, Daniel House Jr. was traded to the Pistons. He was waived. The, they got the second round pick. I, I don't even know who they were trading with. Like in this article, it never said like who they were dealing with the team. If they're a part of like a third way, a freeway trade, I, I, I don't know. Anyways, uh, Kelly Olenek and Oche Abagio, Oche Abagio, oh, I'm so sorry, were traded to the Toronto Raptors for Kyrgios Jr., Otto Porter Jr., and a 2021st rounder. 
That came from Utah. And if you guys don't remember, New Orleans traded Kira to the Pacers. Um, but yeah. So he just got bounced around a lot. But Kyle Linick is actually a really good ad. Otto Porter Jr. for the Jazz is very good. Because Otto Porter Jr. was there for that 2022 run with the Warriors. And it helped very well. They also got a first rounder for Linick, Which was nice. And Oche Abaji. And he's also pretty nice. Like he's. He's not bad. Now, I get he's only averaging 5 points and 2 rebounds, but he's 23, and he could be that guy that gives you solid minutes. Like, he was averaging 19-20 with the Utah Jazz. Like, he goes beyond the stats like a Pat Bev. So, that's always a positive. Then, finally, guys, the last trade, the one I was very excited about, especially when I was on the live stream, especially when I was reporting it live on X. Was Bojan Bogdanovic and Alex Burks to the New York Knicks? Detroit received Quinn Grimes, Evan Fournay, Malachi Flynn, Ryan Arciani Condo, Ryan, my man Ryan, and two future second round picks. You want to talk about a guy who is so good and he's just loading up this Knicks team? It's Bojan. It is legitimately Bojan. This guy's averaging 23 and 2.5 and per game in 33 minutes. He is so consistent with his shot. Almost 47%. I can't rave any more about him than what I've already done. And Alex Burks, it's, it's good. He's good. 12-2-1, for almost 40%. A little inconsistent with his shot, but it's fine. Like He's helping. He was on Knicks before. He played two seasons. He spent a majority of his career with Utah before going to uh, the Cavaliers. Then it was just a long, rocky road after that. But did spend some time with the Knicks, so there is a reunion to that. But this is so good. Like, the, the amount of firepower they have offensively and defensively, and when you get everybody healthy... It's going to be stupid crazy. It's going to be scary. You're going to have Jalen Brunson, Dante DiVincenzo, Bungal Gonvanovich, OJ Nobi, and Joyce Randall. Do you guys not know how good that is? You're going to have a quote unquote big free. No, quote unquote, no. Like your big free was Brunson, OG, and Randall. Now you add Bodon to it, you add Burks back, like you're adding a bunch of firepower. You're also having a lot of good defensive players, like an OG, right? So, this is very, very good. This is very, very promising. Like, this next team is scary. Like, the way their team's constructed, and if Tibbs doesn't blow this out, they're into being a contender. A championship contender, or at least getting out of the first round and managing to get through to second round contender. They're 33 and 19. They have rebuilt their team. Honestly, it is impressive what we're doing here, what we're accomplishing. The Knicks here are setting themselves up for life. Okay, maybe not for life, but for the considerable future, for the foreseeable future. They're only a half a game out of third, replacing the Milwaukee Bucks. They're only two games out of second, battling with the Cavaliers. And they're only seven out of first, where the Boston Celtics hold those keys. But the Knicks are 8-2 and two in their last 10. The Knicks are playing very well, and they have a 2.5 lead on the 76ers, a 4.5 lead on the Pacers, a 5-game lead on the Heat and Magic, and an 8-game lead on the Bulls and a 10 game lead on the Hawks. Going through 1 to 5, then from 5, I'm sorry, from 1 to 10, then 5 to 10, from, from oh, 4 to 10, really. But, anyways, this is very, very promising. Very, very promising. I'm just telling you this, guys. 
if you didn't think the Knicks were dangerous then, just by after adding OG with the forces of Randall, and he doesn't have to be the first option anymore, Brunson, you're now adding a good backup guard and a starting bull on Donovich, a starting forward? Man. Like, this is so good. I can't stop raving about this. Like, he may be 34, but this 34-year-old's getting efficient points. He's getting to the basket. He's picking his good shots. Like, this is exactly what you need as an organization. And they were able to land it. They were 100% able to land it. Such a win by the New York Knicks. And I believe the New York Knicks won the NBA trade on. And there weren't too many big names going. But I know they had to give up Quinn Grimes, but they wanted him gone anyways. But you're telling me that's the starting line. Brunson, DiVincenzo, OG, Bogdan, Randall. Then when Robinson comes back healthy, when all these guys come back healthy, when OG comes back healthy, or Randall comes back healthy, like when all of these guys come back, you got the youngins. But you're finally getting out the old guys, the useless guys, the guys that weren't being really used to their full potential or to their potential at all. Like Evan Fournay, like other guys. This is this is good. This is good. And I know they flipped Malachi Flynn. I believe Malachi Flynn was in the Toronto Raptors deal with OJ and Obi. And of course, you wanted to give up two second rounders. And you you were able to acquire this. Acquire Boat on without a first rounder. Without a first rounder. I want y'all to understand how hard that is. I want you guys to comprehend that. Understand the significance of that. I'm telling you guys. This is def this is definitely a team you want to look out for. They have twenty two picks. They have one, two, three, four, four first rounders in the twenty twenty four draft alone. They have four Five, six, seven. Hold on. One, two, three, four, five, six. Pardon me, I'm so sorry. Seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Eleven first rounders. Eleven first rounders. Eleven second rounders. Very, very interesting. And they also got free trade exceptions, but. Those are those are about to expire. Except for Malachi Flynn. Hmm. I don't know. Whatever. But you're really looking at all the picks. The Knicks are now a masterclass team. Like just just look at them. Just look at them. I'm telling you guys, this team is good. This team has to be scary good. And they're building. Maybe they'll do something in the bottom market. I don't know. Maybe they'll do something smaller. I don't I don't know. But just take just isolate the trade on. They're doing it. They are really doing it. I'm telling you guys. I'm telling you guys. This is it. The New York Knicks are going to be a scary competitive team. I'm telling you guys right now. They're, they, they are looking like a championship contending team. For the trades they made for OG and Bogdan, they are the clear winners of this year's NBA trade line. And I'm going to come up with an article with that on Courts I Heat. Mark my word. It's fascinating. It's incredible. I love it. Don't sleep on the New York Knicks. They've assembled this roster. This team has assembled it greatly. Like, they took their time. They got Jalen Brunson. Okay, they started the flow. 
Then they were starting to move out of pieces. Okay, then they got OG. Now they're just assembling with other guys, key guys, member. Like, this is core. This is tightening it. All very good. All very, very good. Man, love that. That was the final trade. I know I wanted to get you guys out, but it's about to be an hour and 30 minutes. But it's fine. It's fine. We love this. Keep me on the radio. Keep me uh, Keep me on your car, AirPods, work, wherever you're taking me. Or get to your house. Anyways, anywhere you go. That's pretty much all I got for today's podcast episode. It was packed. It was fun. Boys, we got a lot of work to do now. Plus, are coming up soon. We're here for another two months or something. That time's going to go by fast. Very, very fun time in the association, especially if you're a fan of the New York Knicks. What was, what was the record? 33 and 18? Let me fact check that again. 33 and 19. They're over 500. They're over 600. This is incredible. The New York Knicks are going to be second round bound. Last year, they settled for 47-35. They were fifth. They're going to go over that. No way they're going to stall out and only win 14 more games to tie last season's record. Ain't no way. No chance. Remember, the Knicks two years ago were a 37-45 team. They were only a 37-win team. Now look at them. Now they're one of the most commanding teams in the East. And maybe even across the entire league. Who knows? We're only going to find out as time goes on. As time goes on. But this is where at, boys. Ladies and gentlemen, this is all I got. My name is Josh Jennings. I am signing off. Peace out.